if you use crack plugins out there, these are the things you should know before committing to just using crack plugins and not buying and investing in your tools. I understand not a lot of us have a ton of money and not a lot of us are able to do this professionally or full time or whatever, but it's important to know the risks when you get into using crack plugins and especially when you get into using cracked DAWs. A lot of us producers and engineers out there have cracked versions of Ableton or FL Studio. The problem with FL and Ableton cracks are, of course, that you're not paying for your software, but they don't have updates. And updates are essential because your system is continually changing. Your plugins are changing as well if you're upgrading those. And your software is going to be keeping up with those plugins and software only if you've purchased it and you can, you can update them. That's one thing with these cracked DAWs that are very problem problematic, but even more important than the update issues that you're going to run into when you have a DAW is that a crack DAW is that they, they have a tendency of not performing consistently. When you bounce audio out of a, a crack DAW, there's like a 75% chance that it comes out the exact way that you're hearing it. And that's for a number of reasons also relating to the update thing. But it's so frustrating when you export stems, you send them to an engineer and the mix you get back from that engineer don't sound better than your original production because the stems were broken. They had a resolution issue. They were phasing. There was some issue with the driver that you have in your computer because it's newer than the version of software you're using in Ableton. Maybe AZO if you're using Windows isn't as compatible. Like There's so many things that can go wrong, and especially if you have a Windows computer. I know that's why a lot of you get Windows computers, so you can crack your software. I've been there, and I've cracked everything that there is. Now, today, I'm going to talk to you about where I'm at with crack software, if I use any. My answer to whether I use any crack software now is absolutely not. Zero. I can't afford for things to be messing up. More importantly, I record artists. I record music. If my DAW doesn't, doesn't effectively record audio, and someone's paying me for that, I, I can't know that there's problems with the audio until down the line when I start mixing it, getting into the nitty gritty of the audio. And then I start to realize, you know what? There's something wrong with this audio. It was especially bright that day, but I thought the artist had a bright voice, but really it's actually just that there's some phasing in it or there's some information missing in it because the driver wasn't communicating properly with the DAW that day or there was too much CPU being used on my computer and that version of Ableton, little did I know, wasn't able to keep up with any CPU BIOS configurations that allow the processor to divide up power, for example. Now that sounds complicated, but it's a real thing that happens. So I don't use any crack plugins anymore. I don't use a single one. I bought everything that I use or I got it off friends who don't use those plugins anymore or were able to sell them to me or plug in boutique or whatever. I got everything that I own and everything works perfectly. I no longer have to think about, did I record this properly? Is this gonna, is this gonna end up sounding good when I mix it? I don't have to think about, ah, oh, damn, if I open this plugin, is it gonna crash my session? I don't have to think about, hmm, these stems don't sound right. I'm taking them into Cubase and Pro Tools to mix them and they don't sound right. I, I don't know what happened. I don't have to worry about any of that. So my advice to any of you producers and engineers out there who think cracking plugins is a good idea, just don't do it. The tools you have are good enough to get you by. You don't need to be spoiled. If you don't already mix professionally or make money off mixing, you don't need to be by plugins unless it's a hobby for you and you never intend to make money off mixing or producing. If you don't want to make money off it, it's fine. Do whatever the heck you want. But if you're going to be professional at this, you have to do it right. There is no shortcuts in this engineering game. There's none. I've tried all of them. I swear. I've tried every shortcut that there is in this mixing game and this recording game. If you want the quality, you have to pay for it. Here's something a friend of mine was telling me, and I think it's a good rule of thumb for any of you engineers or producers, and that's fast, cheap, or good. Pick two. Either you're going to have fast and good, but it's not going to be cheap. And that's the case with plugins. You know, you want good plugins that are fast and good, then you're going to have to pay for them. If you want fast and cheap, it's not going to be good. You can choose your combination. I hope if you have cracked plugins, you reconsider, or if you're thinking about cracking plugins, you maybe think twice before putting yourself in a, in a really bad situation. You want to be able to continue making music, I understand, but it'll pay off a hell of a lot more if you do things the right way. If you have more questions, you can ask me in the comments. I'll try and get back to everybody who has questions about cracked plugins. I do have a lot of experience with them, but my best advice, like I said before, just don't do it. Buy your plugins. I hope this helps you guys.